Hi guys, welcome to Full Time <laughs> Devils. This is the podcast. We are back with another action packed show. Myself, Adam, Gaz, Jay in the house. Only three of us here today, but that's all good. We've still got loads of chat for you guys. Um, and maybe we'll be able to get Edge a word in Edgeways today. Hey, Gaz. Mike, who's missing today that we had last time? Andy Abdullah. Abdullah. Oh, yeah, I suppose, oh, yeah. It's yeah. just us, us quiet lads on today, isn't it? Andy brings in the views. No gobshites Abdullah today. Abdullah brings in the, the views in terms of his opinions, but. They do both ramble on. Well, what do we all bring here then? You bring the the, the hot football analysis and opinion. I bring Jay in the brings, hot stuff. I don't once know again, football more analysis. football analysis, and also because Jay's a, a lot more of an experienced, experienced United fan than us, he can also day. talk about his memory. So, uh, what so good, good. We, I remember the days. When I was, uh, we used to say that to Ray Bobbins, bringing the experience. So that, you know what that means, Jay. <laughs> When to start saying that to you? You're the new channel Ray resident Bobby's. pensioner. <laughs> you can have a sign. Are uh, you, Jay? So looking for me. Talking about that, Jay's the only one here that can remember Liverpool in the league. Yeah, I can't The only one here is alive when yeah. Liverpool won the league. Am I the only one that's alive? I was in my dad's. N- no, I was a. I was alive. Yeah. Oh, I was. Yeah. I was a year using dad's nuts. Yeah, I was in my dad's nuts. I remember the charity. You know what I can remember about that? The charity shield played in '99. Um, I think we drew, but they got a penalty. So we were the FA Cup winners, they were league winners. But Gary Palace did an amazing tackle and they got a penalty. So nothing's really changed, has it, in you know, 30 years there. Penalty to Liverpool. Right, it shouldn't have been. What, it serves. What, why does it, what would you rather happen? I know that City are out of the Champions League now, but why does it feel worse, the idea of Liverpool winning the league, than City winning the Champions League? Because we've never seen it. Do you reckon that's what? Well, I've never seen City win the Champions League either. So, so why? But City. I, I think, and, and I, I, hate, I hate them both as well. Me, I'm not one of them people who like really clearly hates Liverpool more. I fucking hate them both. I could stomach City. I could stomach City winning the Champions League because they'd still be behind us in the Champions Leagues. I could stomach City winning the league because they'd still be behind us in leagues. That's... The quadruple is a different story that would have done me heading. Yeah, it would have pissed on our treble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but Liverpool. I mean, we saw it last season. They didn't even win the Champions League last season and what went on there. Mm. Just madness. Petitions and all sorts of craziness and songs about how wonderful they are and how they convert all Kiev into Liverpool fans. Just nonsense. <laughs> just just not well, some of them. <laughs> Can you imagine? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I've not seen anything like it. Like, you know, offering Sergio Ramos out for charity boxing matches. And oh, that was funny. Petitioning your <laughs> way did that? This, this some guy used to be in Brookside. Don't remember that. Oh, God, yeah, 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 it's Sinbad. Steve Brooks, Steve. No, 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 it's not, not, that, not Sinbad, not that high level. Just some guy who was like, you know, oh. second man in lift once. I'll be honest, Sinbad's the only name I could remember. Yeah. No, some guy, Mark something, I think his name is. But he, um, yeah, he, he offered... No Mark. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Mate, they still wanted that final replay, like, fucking four months after <laughs> it had happened, honestly. <laughs> Mate, they can pick me up from here. Can, can you pick me up, Nick? Can, can you pick me up from here? Because I read here? the comments every week. Yeah, it's fine. You can pick I read me up. the comments every week. Not that I, I care what people say. Yeah, but keep commenting though, guys. We really appreciate <laughs> you getting involved with the channel. I honestly. see people always saying, "Bring your head closer, so." Yeah, just, but I, 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 the volume. The volume. I spread my voice, mate. Nick's got the gain up. We're all right. S- sorry, guys. Producer Lindelof is on it. <laughs> well, one day, one day we'll show Nick, but he does look like Lindelof. Producer Honestly, it's a Nick spitting Delof. image. Spitting image, I think. Little, Slightly uh, better looking. Not bit. spitting. A little bit, yeah, a little bit. Not spitting image. Sure, but how old is he? He's younger than me. But I'm richer than you. Because it's funny because we got you got Romero, and you've got Lindelof, you've got oh, I know where and this is going. older Ashley he's Young. He's got a great <laughs> missus. <laughs> and he's Swedish. You kind of just look Swedish. I'll that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'd love to look Swedish. His, did you know Victor Lindelof's wag is more loaded than him? She's like an Instagram model, isn't she? But just like Nick's off cam- off uh, oh, mic here, so you can't hear what he's saying, but... Sorry, yeah, I should just start yeah, having yeah, a conversation yeah, so, with him, like, really, shouldn't I? Is, is, she, is she actually an Instagram model, then, is she? I Victor don't know about Lindelof. that. I've heard she does bring in the guap, though. Yeah. Oh, really? Hmm? Anyway, we're 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 really flirting around the real issues today, aren't <laughs> yeah, we? Yeah, we are. We don't Guys, want to talk about football. Considering, really. <laughs> considering what happened this weekend, Manchester United nil, Everton four. Um, United have lost five out of the last eight games, <clears throat> or is it six? I've lost count. Is it six out of eight, and, or is it five out of seven or something? Something. I think it's five, yeah, out, of five out of seven. Sorry. Uh, we've only won against Watford and West Ham. Um, top four still possible, but. 
We've got City, Chelsea, how? Huddersfield, Cardiff. How, how is the top four? I know that it is still possible, but how how how, how no is one, it still possible? No we are so it. crap. No one wants the top four in a minute. I don't want Europa League. Like, you know what I ate? <laughs> we should have kept Ali, Mourinho in charge Ali then. We would have finished yeah, ninth. Yeah. <laughs> Ali brought us so close <laughs> to the top four. And we're going to miss out and get Europa. I know. Whereas I'd rather have just... Missed out on everything. So what now. you're saying Can is you you'd rather Mourinho still be United manager. That's what you're saying. And then Ali in the summer. <laughs> yeah, it's, in Guys, hindsight. You, you're saying the complete opposite to what my mentions have said since Sunday, by the way. Really? Just, I've had the Mourinho cult just on to me. It's no, been a day. No. I haven't even tweeted. <laughs> is it that bad? Because it's just like... First of all, I don't even want to talk about Manchester... Like, <laughs> I didn't want to do this podcast. I don't want to do City Pre... I, I, Good to you too, mate. Like, I just don't want to talk about football. Do you know what, though? Who cares, man? I mean, I don't care about football, but, yeah, we had a bad result. Yeah. We might the result, or was it? It's been worse post Fergie than this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, I People think... People are getting excited. And I, I, the only thing that makes this worse at the minute is the fact that it's Liverpool and City who could potentially win the Champions League and the league between them. Obviously, Liverpool could win the Champions League not say but in 2014 this was worse because it looked like Liverpool were going to win the league then if you remember we had Moyes who come in and took a title winning team and absolutely just run it into the ground and it was just it was horrible then we had the Van Al era which again was just game after game of dross people have got these romantic notions with Van Al. yes he brought in Marcus Rashford because we had 12 injuries yes he brought in Tim Fossey and he won an FA Cup but the football was turgid for months on end it was it really turgid, was. but under Moyes, I don't think I saw a performance as bad as what I saw against Sorry, Everton. I saw him on Al then, but oh. oh, yeah, yeah, I get, I get where you're coming from. Did. Fun, but, but you say that, but we we got we got beat by Everton three 0 and it was similar feelings of maybe it was just maybe it was just because it was the first year post Fergie, and you thought, oh, we'll, we'll be back next I year. I think it is as well. We've come to no, ex- gone. <laughs> we've come to expect more out of Ali's team in yeah. terms of. Not in terms of result, because we've had some bad results, but in terms of application, attitude, style of play, everything. And it's been a complete drop off. I do agree with Jay in that I think people are looking at it and, you know, blowing it up by times 100. We have to give Ali time. I think everyone, no matter who the manager was, they need time. No matter who the manager was, they need to bring players in. No matter who the manager was, they need to get rid of players. One of the things I agreed with Jose on, which I didn't agree with a lot with him by the end of the time, was that he needed more backing in the summer that went. Um, But we have spent a lot of money over the last six years. And it's the way we've spent money, not how much we've spent. And I don't think... I've always, this was something I said from, just always said, United never should never buy Galactical signings. We should always aim to make players Galacticals and make players those big names. And I think that's the thing that we've done over the years so well. And we've bought players um, with huge expectations. Um, Alexis Sanchez, or you just look back, Angel Di Maria Falca, Alexis Sanchez, um, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, even Paul Pogba to a certain extent. But I think Paul Pogba fitted the profile and fits the profile of a player that can get better and can improve. So whether he wants to be here or not is another story um, for that foreseeable future. I still think he'll be here next season. Yeah, yeah. But the profile of players that we've been signing hasn't been Manchester United. like, yeah. And that needs to change. I know what you mean. It needs to change from top. Yeah, totally. I think if Pogba goes this summer, then he's just showing that he's got absolutely zero bottle at all about himself. I disagree about bottle. I think... He should stay. I think he will stay. I think by he the will way. stay and I think he should stay and I think he should kind of take it as a challenge that I can be one of the guys that can help bring Manchester United yeah. back to their and that's what former th- glories. And I I do believe he cares about Manchester United to a certain extent. But at the same time, if I'm Paul Pogba, if I'm David De Gea, and this sounds mad me saying it after their recent performances because their performances have been awful, but I almost feel if I'm one of those two players. I'm thinking, do Manchester United or will Manchester United be doing enough to attract the best players, to be trying to win the best trophies? Because those two players are two players that should be a team that, are do- that is doing that. How is David De Gea still at Manchester United? The thing is, like, if Dave left in the summer, I won't be good, you mate. I think we've had oh. a lot of years out of him. We all thought he was going to go a few years ago. He's not Mancunian born and bred. There's no reason why he should have to spend his entire, more or less his entire career 
at Manchester United. By rights, he should have won a league. I know he won a league title a few years ago, but he should have won another league title or a Champions League. By rights, he should have won three Champions yeah. Leagues. If, if it wasn't for a fax machine, he would have had three yeah. Champions Leagues in his closet yeah. right now. He's a, he's a lot better than some of the keepers that have, have won those titles and, and Champions League. So, <laughs> so we'll be good at him. Bob, uh, I've said to you, Macca, the other week on here, it's Rayola for me. It just stinks of Rayola. I just think he listens to him too much. And I think, for, I, I don't mean you disagree, that I actually can see Paul Pogba leaving probably in the summer because I just think if Rayola thinks he can get him a massive move this summer for the most amount of money possible, I think, he, I think he's got his ear and I think that'll happen. And it saddens me because I'm, 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 I think losing Pogba, and I'm not his biggest fan, but I think losing him will be a step backwards and I don't think we would replace him. I think we need to keep him and get more midfielders, not lose him and get midfielders. I think it's, I, I don't think he'll go. I just, no. and I think the, the comments that came, I hate hearing players is with the usual tripe after a game. Um, but what he said this week kind of sounded like a player that was going to be around um, yeah. and he's kind of on the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer side of the changing room, not one of those players Ole was talking about, no. which yeah. everyone's... The thing with... Look, first things first, I can't defend any Manchester United players' application performance against Everton. They've all pretty much said the same. David, David De Gea, Paul Pogba have said the same about the whole team's performance. It was embarrassing. With Paul Pogba, though, and I, I don't get it. I don't think neutrals look at it like this. I think it's purely Manchester United fans. I just find that the talk about him is always so massive. I'm going to get criticised for this, that's fine. But he's a central midfielder. Now, he's only as good as the players he's passing to and the players he's receiving the ball from. Now, of course, we expect, I expect more leadership from him in terms of making those around him better. But in terms of what he does on the pitch, in terms of playing-wise, even against Everton, he was probably our best performer because he was the one that was pinging in the balls down. Now, I'm not defending that performance overall. He was the best of a bad bunch. But I just find it crazy when the narrative gets drawn to Paul Pogba doesn't care or Paul Pogba's attitude or Paul Pogba... Like, what is caring and what is yeah. fighting for the... I said this to you earlier, like, i seen comments on Twitter this week which said, I just play the women's team, they fight for the badge. Do you mean they win games? Because that's what you're, you're saying. The women's team win, that means they must fight for the badge. I, I, I just find that whole fight for the badge and caring stuff really bad. And I think you look at the hair, you look at Pogba, their performances should be a lot better. But I find they are not the cause of the problem. They are being let down by what's around them and maybe by promises that the club have given them. You think when Paul Pogba arrived at Man United, he was told that you're going to have an ageing match behind you and all this, that and the other? No, of course, we expect better performances from him. But if you look at his stats this season, they haven't actually been... I, I just find the whole narrative around him a little bit unfair. I know them. what you mean when you say the attitude thing. When that when that's the first thing that comes out of people's mouths, I'm always a little bit confused by that. Like, what, what, his attitude, surely his performance is the most important no, thing. It's weird with Pogba. I'm actually the other way around with him and his, the comments on him. You know what annoys me about Pogba? It's not when he plays badly and the comments you get. It's when he plays well and the comments you get. And this really infuriates me because... If Paul Pogba plays really well, goes past players, scores goals, and has a good game, which he does, not often enough in my opinion, but he does, I hear things like his athletic, his, his athleticism, his strength, his power, his pace. <laughs> I hear it all the time. The guy's one of the most talented footballers I've ever seen. He's not consistent enough, but in terms of talent, he's amazingly talented. Yeah, that's all you talk about. I see Kevin De Bruyne do something. I don't hear about his pa pa power. His athleticism, mm. it's mm. his skill, and it's his, his genius, his creativity. Pop has got all that, but whenever he does something well, it's like, oh, he's just built well. Yeah. And we know yeah. that, you know. The, the we know why that is. We all, we That's all know what it gets all... to me. So get where you're coming from with the attitude and all that real rubbish. And the one thing we'll say about Pop is, I don't think he, I don't think, and I, don't, I think this is indicative of a lot of United players, and this might sound crazy like it makes sense, but I think some people know what I'm on about. I don't think any United player doesn't want to win. I don't think any of them go out and they're not hungry for the win. I think sometimes in that team, they just don't hate losing enough. Yeah. yeah. And I think there's a difference there. That when the, ch you know what, you all want to win. And I, 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 these are competitive people that want to win. Do you know what I mean? They are going out and they are giving everything they can to win. But I think when there's a bit of an edge in you, you know, that's epitomised by all the great players is, you hate losing. And I don't think some of them hate losing enough. They can sort of shrug mm. it off a bit. And I think that's the issue. You've got to have that little bit in you sometimes that you really... And listen, 
I wasn't his biggest fan, but one thing about Wayne Rooney is he hated losing. Mm. We all know the, the, the legends that Roy Keane, <laughs> your Brian Robsons, who hated losing, who could elevate people, players around him because they hated losing, especially Robbo, who, like Popper, was surrounded at one point in his career by a lot of averageness. But I just think that's what's missing, not just from Pop, but I think some of the players, they just need that little bit of edge sometimes where they hate losing. I think that, that might be missing at times where it's like, you're two down, you're three down, and it's like, oh, we've lost this one, never mind. Not never mind, but you know what, we move on. And I think sometimes you just need that little bit of edge that's lacking. I think we lacking. do get a little bit, like, there's a lot of revisionism though, and I've been seeing it over the, like, look, people talk about, Jose Mourinho like he shouldn't have got sacked he deserved to get sacked mm. people talk about I seen someone the other day saying they wish Wayne Rooney was still here I'm not, no, I'm not <laughs> saying no, no, that not yours, yeah, yeah. you're not saying that I seen it until yeah. I can't remember who said it and I was sat there thinking uh, do you not remember how badly uh, he was geez. and, and you, you, the person who tweeted is someone that gives Pogba a stick and I think Pogba plays better than Rooney did like mm, uh, that's yeah, yeah. and that's not a lot because you don't have to be better than that but it's like I just find revisionism and like if you put poor scores in this Man United team he'd struggle yeah Roy Keane I don't know about that because he's a mm. different kind of player and he has yeah. a different kind of drive but if you put a poor scores in that team he struggles yeah. that's it you, 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 you have to have better play. I'm not, and this isn't me saying oh we need to sign X, Y and Z to bring the best out of Paul that's not me saying that or trying to push the blame from him Pogba's as much to blame about every, as everybody else but I feel like if we're pointing as Pogba as the problem, De Gea as the problem, Martial's been awful in the last couple of weeks, Rashford's been awful in the last couple of weeks, but I don't think they're the problems at Manchester United. And we're looking at, again, I mentioned Martial and Rashford. I keep seeing people talk about they want Sancho and they want this. Use like that can't mm. even give Rashford time to make no, mistakes or no, Martial no. to have that inconsistency. Oh, now, we, we know we want consistency, but yeah. what are you going to be doing in, in six months' time when we sign Sancho and he, he has a stinker? To, it, it, well, interesting what you said then about Pogba and the impressions people get from him. I think that that's still, their impressions are still in people's minds now from when we first signed him. Like, I still think that people believe that he's a defensive midfielder yeah. or he's a, a Roy Keane type player. And, you know, he's the, he's the type of player to run up and down the pitch, box to box. He's not, he's a creative midfielder. He's an attacking midfielder. He create, he's created more than most this season. He has he's scored more than yeah, most and has right. more assists. And maybe more. if he had some half decent defensive midfielders behind him. He pointed him. it out, Macca, then, I think. Um, Against Everton, he didn't have a great game, but he wasn't. He, he wasn't. He was by far, probably not by far, but he wasn't our worst player. Do you know what I mean? There was other players that let themselves down a lot more than Paul Pogba did, but he becomes a talking point. Because he's, he's the like, best player. And there is an element of, yeah, he should do better, but also some of the players around him ain't great as well at, at the minute. And it's like I, I, he did some good, decent long passes, and nothing came of him because of. Poor control or I, I, at the same time, right? Thinking. When it feels like sometimes I f feel like we might do this a bit much. With with we, we need to talk about his poor performance as well and yeah. the things that he does get wrong. Because Paul Pogba, a lot of the time, it's the simple things that the guy just doesn't seem capable of doing. He gets the ball and he wants to shield it for five seconds before releasing it. When the pass is on, everyone watching at home is screaming for it. Everyone in the stands is screaming for it. There's no way I'm going to come here and say that Paul Pogba is, is a player who lacks football in intelligence because there's no way with what he's won in that position that he can lack football in intelligence. It feels like he's, he's trying to do just too much than he needs to do. He did, that, he did that against Barca. He can't you do that. He was getting frustrated league. and he was trying to do it all on his own. And it, it, he's... he's uh, performance against Barca I thought progressively got worse as he got more desperate to try and make things happen and I get that I get you trying to make things happen and you feel like your responsibility is on you and he, he hasn't really shot in Europe this season our best result in Europe he didn't even play so I get that but I think sometimes you need someone around him you need someone with him and I think if you had a Kino I know we keep saying this but if you had a Kino next to him you'd see the best performance from Paul Bobby you can imagine people say Kino would hate Pete Kino would love that no. yeah, he would no. Kino no, would love Ronaldo would Pogba. listen to yes. Kino as well because everyone listens to Kino whether you want or not you're going <laughs> to and I think he would he'd be the one who could tell him like you know give it go what you know just in his ear and he'd do the things that Paul Pogba doesn't like doing you know like, 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 he does for fans we look at, we look at uh, when when Carrick came here, he had skulls alongside him. Yeah. And it's, you need that waste of money. Well. But I, mean, I think we've got to look at the whole team and think, what is happening? Because the performance has, has dropped off massively. It's, you look at Martial, massive drop off. He was in great form this season. Rashford, the same. I think Rashford's been going on for a bit longer. Um, obviously, Martial will get the critics and all that with the new contract and the price tag, but 
Rashford's form has probably been worse a bit longer, but they've both been stinking the place out. Um, Lukaku, I don't want to talk about Lukaku, massive fan, but stinking the place out. What is? How, how do we? What has, what has changed? I mean, I've, I've you know me, I stick up for Marcus Rashford till I'm blue in the face. I don't think I'm sick of hearing some of the stick he's been getting. I, I get criticising him, but some of the stick I think he's been getting has been OTT. I've said it for quite a while this season. I think we've used him when he's been injured. I think we've, we've, we're over relying on him at times. I think there's, he's not the problem. I think, yeah, his performances do need to improve. But again, I just think that, as well, with Marcus Rashford, you can see there's another level he can reach. He's still only 21, people forget that. He was thrown in at such a young age. And he's achieved so much so quickly. People forget he's still got a lot to learn, a lot to grow. You know, when the likes of Harry Kane were his age, they weren't, or Mo Salah, they weren't anywhere near the level that he's, he is now. And I expect Marcus to kick on. Um, Anthony Martial, he's a couple of years older, and I think that makes a difference. So the expectation level is probably a bit higher, plus the price tag, plus the new contract. So yeah, both of them do need to improve, but I think they can and they will. I think we just need to show. I know it sounds daft because we, mm. we, we have been around a few years, but just. Trust Oli to get the best out of him. He's a player. That's, that's what I'm We saying. need a player on that pitch who can just pull everyone up when they're feeling down, when they're down, you know what I mean? We don't. And I feel like that a lot of people got, I'm sorry to bring it back to him again, but I had that impression of Pogba that he'd be that type of player, mm. you know, because he's mates with everyone. Yeah. I thought he's the player who, when everyone's got their heads down on the pitch, he's going to say, come on, lads, we can still win this. And he's not. He needs you someone else to do that for him. From that we need that in the team. Though, you've seen Pogba trying to do that against Everton, too little, too late, trying to do that against Barcelona. But then what you've got to look at as well, He's trying to pull everyone else together. And then he's got all that pressure on his individual performance. Mm. And it's like, it's a mad little... I do think he's one of the candidates for captaincy. But um, it is one of those things where does the pressure of being captain overweigh just being allowed to just be play your football? Um, cool. Is he the right captaincy? I don't... I don't, I, don't, I don't think, think he's right for captain, captain only, Am I the only one who thinks we're missing under her Someone said that since he come out of the team, we've not been playing the same. I want to say something about Ander Herrera, right? Ander Herrera, when he joined Man United, went on about you know football tradition and how he's a real football man and things like that, and that he's all about the game that he loves and the fans and the culture around it. Why is the guy going PSG? You know what I mean, though. If he, if that man's a proper football man, like a proper football man, into you know traditions, culture of the game means a lot to him. Why is he going PSG? I think we've, we, we have been on about this, haven't we? But I, you know, I think part of the reason is, I keep bringing back to this, Sanchez's contract just skewed everyone's thinking. And I think when you're seeing someone who's on 350k a week, whatever Sanchez's on, and you on 200k a week, and you're not getting it, and you're playing every game and he isn't playing any, then you're going to get a myth when the club are saying, no, we're only going to give you one eighter. I'm not justified, I'm just saying, I think that's his thinking. Oh, I'll say that. I think it's his last big contract. No, no, oh, no. I get the move in football yeah. in terms. I just mean in um, ethical, yeah, ethical terms. No, you know right. what I mean? It's like Juan Mata would never go to PSG. Um, there's an interesting story on that. The part of that story, which is, there's a story in the papers this week, how true it is, I don't know. But it was basically saying that the Spanish players, De Gea, Mata, Herrera, are disgruntled at United because of the fact that there seems to be a preferential treatment with English players getting better contracts that maybe don't deserve them. Mm. And I think as as fans, we can all we all I'm not we don't need to mention names. We know who those players are. But do you think? Because it's kind of flip. I remember us taking the piss out of Wes Brown's new contract because we just thought he'd accept whatever because he's a homegrown player. Yeah, and like it I'm seems glad you to have, all because there wasn't wasn't there a time when he w- wasn't signing a new deal because I think it was John O'Shea got offered more money. And at the time, he was keeping all shit out of the team. Yeah, and it was like, but now it seems right. to be that English lads yeah. just get any contract they want, and yeah. Herrera's like, yeah, but you can't have that. Bit of a fifth columnist there. This would be Spanish lot, you know. <laughs> it would be a bit of a mad bit of logic if that is United trying to keep some sort of, and this isn't what I'm saying, but some sort of English identity at the club. Because who gets the identity Make of Manchester United? United? Great again. <laughs> who gets the identity of Manchester United? <laughs> better? There's a title. There's the image. <laughs> I'm saying, who gets Ed Woodward with a, 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 a UA? Who oh. gets the identity of Manchester United better? Juan Mata <laughs> or Phil Jones? Juan Mata every yeah. single time. Look, yeah, I, I think we could replace Mata and Herrera quite easily in the squad, but I think it's a headache to have to replace Herrera. 
because we should be focusing on replacing Matic and, re- and, yeah. and adding to the midfield rather mm. than um, taking away from it. Um, I think Matic just needs to pull out of his misery at the minute. Mm, taking in the back. He's taking him back. Yeah. Everyone jumps on him and everyone hounds him. And I don't think Matt, Matic is a poor professional. I think he, he does try his best. I think his legs are catching up with him. I think the game is that now it's just at a frantic pace. And I think the players around him are, are probably at a lower standard than he's ever played alongside in the Premier League. How many players need to go this summer? Ten. You're not going to replace them, are you? But, but I mean, you could have four lads coming in from the academy. Yeah, I, think, I think if we're honest, if we went through, well, Rowell well, in defence, I think he'd go. Personally, I'd say I'd get rid of Jones, but I don't think he will. I think he still rates him. Sign the contract. He's signed, he's signed a contract. Valencia's going to go in here. Rojo, Valencia, Bae, definite. Bae, I think, is going to go. Darmian. Darmian's a definite. Damian. Let's say, let's say definite. Yeah. So, Rojo, Valencia, Darmian. Yeah. Her- Herrera? I don't think Bay's a definite. Right. I, I think, think it's Herrera, possible. Herrera's Herrera. a definite now, at Herrera, this point. I think Herrera, yeah, unfortunately, because you know, I like him. Matter? Yeah. I don't think that's I think a definite, Matt, is it? Matt, Matt, it's not a definite, Matt. but... Would you say very lightly? Very lightly. I think very lightly, especially this time. He's not signed it yet. He's not going to watch. Marshall. No. Are you he's crap? very likely to uh, leave oh, Manchester United in this summer. Could happen. Could happen, mate. Could happen. He's just signed a new deal. People want to get rid of him. Yeah, I speak to Old Trafford and people mate, want him gone. you speak to absolute mentalists. <laughs> but dude, Marshall's the, the issue. issue. <laughs> Marshall's been shit yet. You know what? I'm done, man. I'm just... I don't know. No, but no, no. I think, I think I don't get football anymore. Do you know what makes me laugh? Well, I just... I, just, I saw the headline. I don't know. Luke has gone. Yeah, this is like... Lukaku's like unhappy and he doesn't think you know United are matching his expectations or whatever. He's not matched ours. Well, I think that's crazy to come in on such a a, a big uh, transfer fee to flatter to deceive. Really, he's not hit the heights that he should have done to win nothing and then say you know what it's not for me. At least Paul Pogba's won things, won some trophies with us. Lukaku's Martial's giving up already. I'm not into that. The, the thing yeah, with, as well, he's won the thing I was watching that game against Everton, yeah. And it's like, I play football at a very, very low level compared to these guys. But, well, to, to be fair, <laughs> the same level as Smalling in that. <laughs> but, um, like, I was watching the game, yeah, and I was watching us play out from the back. Rashford's waiting on the wing. <laughs> Smalling launches the ball and goes out for a throw. Yeah, no. We launch the ball up to Lukaku. The ball bounces of Lukaku. Michael Keane gets it. Paul Pogba... F- Floats an outstanding ball to Marcus Rashford over the top. Yeah. Rashford sticks it over. These, these are just small like things in the game. But that happens a hundred times in a match. Where the quality and I just think some of these players, like Paul Pogba, like maybe Martial wrongly because he's still got a lot to prove himself. Maybe even Rashford, because he shouldn't even be that arrogant, but maybe he is. And I think they're just looking at someone and just thinking, this is, this is you know, shit. You know, you talk about like playing it out from the back. I mean, I swear to God, if you had a drink every time United strung three passes together, you'd be sober by the end of the game. Because it just never happens. It's just like one pass, two pass, lose it. One pass, two pass, lose it. <laughs> I swear it. it's been like recently. It's just like, I was watching like you were, uh, Michael, from playing out. And we just can't get going. And it's just embarrassing to watch. You know what I mean, and I feel for the fans like yourself. Who, who, who I know you had, a, you know, a lot of fans who go away. Have a great day anyway. So it's, you know, football sometimes is secondary. But you know, you go in there, you expect your team to turn up. Who's clapping the, the players off the pitch at the end? Uh, the fans at the end. Ollie, who else was there? Was it Ollie and Tommy? Lindelof. Lindelof. Do you know what I mean? I, I know people say, oh, does it matter? But I, I've done enough away. I don't think you know, it. You, I, it's just a, it's. A little bit of acknowledgement, I think. Can I go don't a long think way. it matters personally because yeah. at, uh, this I like. The players in their head, like, they're, oh, they're probably thinking, oh, we've, I can't face them. Like, I feel embarrassed. Yeah. So nah. you don't know what... No, just let me finish. Yeah. So you don't know what's going on in their heads at that time. They might not even be thinking about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But it's so, fans are so fickle and it's such an easy win. And it's an such an easy, easy way to get, you know, <laughs> oh, they've lost, but it's... He's, I know it's stu- it sounds nah, I'm sorry, oh we've bro. got hammered 4 0 but it's better because he's coming clapped us. That is no. so stupid, yeah. But it does no, work. No, no, like no, it's not. And it's... I think I think just going over to them, having someone someone needs to be there to say, lads, these boys have come all the way to see you. You've not performed. Go and say thank you. And that's right. Yeah. But it's such a small thing. Nah, but that should be the standard. 
That should the standard should be that every single one of those players goes and applauds that way. And if nothing, they don't, they're is a what prick. I'm saying. No, of course it means something. It shows that you appreciation for the fans no, that I'm spent just... all that money traveling to watch you. Uh, Especially when you've put in fuck all earning what you're earning, playing for who you're playing for. I hear that. I understand and I agree with you. Yeah. And it, it's better. And in the heat of the moment, I've said at times, oh, well, no, I bet you can't even come over and say thank you. But when the dust settles and everything and you think about it, you don't know what's going on through them players' heads. No, 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 okay, Chris okay, Morley's okay. probably thinking, I don't want to go over there. He's like, fucking hate me at the okay, moment. Okay. Uh, Pogba's probably thinking, oh, this is so embarrassing. We've lost 4-0. Like, I need to get... So they're not thinking negatively about the fans by not going to see them. Thinking about themselves. Yeah, which is bad in its... But you know what I'm saying? What I'm saying is... Go over there and it's take a small it, bro. Thing, I don't know. It's a small thing for fans to get angry about, but... It's such a small thing that the players can just earn a little bit of... And I used to say about Rooney, if Rooney just embraced us a little bit towards the end of yeah. his career, yeah. Yeah. we yeah. would have let him off with yeah. so yeah. much yeah. stuff. And I tell you, Do you know what I mean? Roy Keane once was <laughs> going on mad about a contract, but we didn't care because it was Keane on... I'm sorry to any, any man... Like, any Man United player, right, who doesn't, who thinks that they're going to get abuse if they lose a game and go and applaud the fans just doesn't get what the fans of this club are all about, which is fair enough, they might just not get it, but... United fans wouldn't do that. We've seen you know, you know, you saw him che- cheering Ollie's name at the end of the game. You've seen him in the past uh, cheering the managers fans, when you're three 0 down. Definitely. The way fans, uh, yeah, oh yeah, but they, maybe they, they wouldn't. You know, I mean, I've seen Rangers get booed at home games. Brandy yeah, no, no, actually, yeah, yeah home games. This goes on at home games. We all know that. Mm. Uh, not by everyone, obviously, but yeah, no. I, sometimes after a loss like that, though, you're just looking for things, aren't you? Mm. You're looking for, you know what I mean? Like, they didn't even come and clap us. This, this, that, and the other. I think the, main, the reason that stood out so much is the fact that Oli did it. Oli came over and applauded the fans, and I think that amplifies it slightly. And I think what was more telling for me was the way Oli was in his press conference. He seemed hurt, didn't he? He seemed hurt. He seemed angry as well. He seemed, he seemed he did, but he did. He seemed calculated. He seemed like that thing when Fergus gave him three envelopes. Like someone's going to use three, are going to dis- disappoint me. And it's kind of like. He wasn't saying names, he was just saying some of these ain't going to be here next season. I like, so it's I like kind the of fact he was like, you know, I'm going to be a success here. Laying a some challenge down. Yeah, for that's like, min. Success. Yeah, I love min. that. Like, I want to hear that. I don't want to hear, I don't know, like David Moyes, I don't know what I'm doing, tackle, we're all doomed. You want to hear your know, manager saying, yeah, of course I'm going to be a success. Some of them lot. Yeah, as age. We'll that, find out how toxic yeah, it gets week, now but. as well, because, you know, if some people are to be believed over the last, you know, last couple of managers, then it's been pure player power and players have, have got the bollocks, manager. That's so. what, I, if some people are to be believed. Well, Listen, well, if it is pure player power and it is the players turning us against the manager, they're not going to do that with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. <sighs> We're always going to be behind well, him. So are we repeating if, the, that if those again? players are One thing doing though, that, then they've got nowhere to hide now. And I think I have to mention is Woodward, man. He's got to take responsibility for this. Mate, I've been saying... See, yeah, I've, I've, I've been getting grief because... It amazes me how he gets this pass all the time and people laugh about it and think it's funny. Yeah, I know. You know the guy's employed all these managers. I know. He's wasted all these money. He's had a transfer policy that makes no sense. He's still not appointed a director of football at the time of us speaking, six years after Sir Alex retired. David Moyes' contract still hasn't run out yet. <laughs> this is a joke. The best bit. This is an absolute shambles. The director of football bit, right, is him saying that we need a director of football. I took that because... I, I took that as him saying, I don't really know what the f*** I'm doing when it comes to football. No. So he's basically admitted that and then still hasn't hired anyone. No. Do you know great leaders, guys? They delegate. There's nothing wrong in delegating. No, like, there's, no. There's genuinely there's nothing not. wrong in... Like, him getting a director of football isn't him saying, I haven't got a clue about football. No. It's him... Doing somebody, the best yeah, thing for yeah. his company exactly. and his... Because that's ultimately yeah, what it is to No, no, if he did that three years ago, then yeah, fair enough. But it's just taking him so long to do it. I've, whenever I talk about Ed Woodward and United shouldn't have enough back managers, I get criticised because I said Mourinho should have got sacked. You can agree with both. Um, Mourinho deserved to get sacked and he deserved more backing from the board. Mourinho deserved to get sacked and the board have to fix up and... There's been so many failures now that you have to get things right from the top. You have to give a foundation for these managers to build on. Um, I said it the day Mourinho arrived. I said it the day he left. The board has to get it right because if they don't, then even if a manager comes in and is successful for a short term, if he goes, then it's going to be back to the same. So we haven't really got a plan in place. Who's signing these players? I heard we've got the biggest scouting network in the the league, if not in the world, yet... 
Our transfer mm. record is awful. Who's making the ultimate decision? That's mm. what worries me. Who's making that decision that we are going to go out? We heard Feeling's going to be sporting. sporting oh, oh, yeah, that sounds like United that. doing it on the cheap, doesn't it? Well, I like, do you know what? One, the only reason I like that, one of the main reasons I like that is if you've got Ollie as manager and you've got Mickey Feeling as sporting director or whatever, then Woodward's got nowhere to hide anymore because people ain't going to turn on them too. If it's yeah. still not working, yeah. they're gonna Same look with at the him. Players, isn't it? They're gonna look at him or they're gonna look. To, you know what I mean? It's gonna, it's gonna go elsewhere. Because at the minute, something needs to change because it's just a joke. And I don't want us to go out in the summer, like we have the last few summers, and spend hundreds of millions of pounds on the wrong type of player or players <laughs> because they can sell a load of shirts and right. don't fit in. And then we're back here in twelve months. Got some, it. some of these players are the right players. They're just in the wrong system, wrong structure, run. You know, whatever. Uh, yeah. Are people getting onto feeling as a bad signing, like you just said, on the cheap or someone that maybe not experienced in the role? It's important to know that like other clubs, Ajax have Overmars, uh, Barca had Abidal. Don't know if they still do, um, but a lot of clubs, big clubs, put people into these roles that know the club mm. that may not necessarily have um, experience. People keep saying, "Get Edwin Mandasar." Do people realise he's CEO at Ajax? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we're going to yeah. get him, he's taking Woodward's job and yeah. not a sporting director. <laughs> so, like, I mean, we're not getting Van der Sar. So let's, like, let's get Van der Sar, so like, then. <laughs> you kind of have to be. Like, it's so me. Mm, but, yeah. It's just mad, isn't it? Because Knowing the club is important as well, United, I said. Probably no club in the world has got more players who've had more success or ex-players that have more success than we have. We have got probably about... I don't know. Just keep the class United two away from have, it. have won titles and been involved in Champions League finals and Champions League wins and all this and worked some with Sir Alex and been at, been at the club and yet we can't find one who could fit the bill for mm. the directors of football. I know, yeah. Are you telling me that? Really? Should have done what City did and just copied Barca and just took well, everything. It, you know, it works with Tiki and what here? Yeah. Tiki, Tiki and Taka. Tiki and Taka, yeah. <laughs> it works for them, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? If I want the scouts to do it, it works for them. Do you know what I mean? Like, but that's why City was so successful. Yeah. They had that plan in place. It might have been, let's copy Barcelona, yeah. but that was their plan for a long time. Yeah, exactly. Works. Especially when it comes to the doctors. That's it. Mm. <laughs> Same <laughs> doctor as Gerald Miller, apparently. Um, Allegedly. Hmm... <laughs> you know who I, I heard it you, oh, you don't know who Jerome Miller is no 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 <laughs> <laughs> some people say neither did AJ when he picked a fight him but uh, <laughs> oh right okay um, I don't know what I'm Boxer. talking about anymore I just hate football guys is what I'm but kind of, it's all going to get turned around tomorrow night Matthew. you're going to fall in love with football again Wednesday night you mean? Yeah. Oh, it, no it's Wednesday night it's tomorrow night, night. Yeah, today's yeah, Monday we don't say tomorrow on <laughs> no, these. today's Tuesday see you guys <laughs> I am an utter professional, so Sorry. I don't deal with today, today's and Sorry. tomorrow's and yesterday's because I don't know when you are going to watch Wednesday this. Wednesday night, sorry. But, um, Wednesday the 25th. Is these it? amateurs. 24th. I don't know, mate. I'm just up at four. Yeah, anyway, go back to my original point before we got lost in the semantics of the discussion <laughs> down on the dates. <laughs> You're going to get reinvigorated with your love of football when United tear City apart on nah. Wednesday evening. He'll be cutting his wrists after the game if that happens. He's going to be fuming. It's going to be one of them where you're going to go, yeah! <sighs> yeah Have we just Liverpool given Liverpool the league? Title number 19. And you That's know awesome. what? No one can... I've been, I've been... You know what I've been dreading, yeah? Every game Liverpool have had for the last few months, I've been like, please drop points. Please drop points. Because... I've just known it's getting to this point now where we decide the league and we decide it for Liverpool because we are not losing that game against Manchester City. <laughs> yeah, After we are. getting dicked 4-0 <laughs> by pumped. Everton, I don't care about the form, we're not going to lose that game and it's going to be horrible. I want us to win. I want us to get top four. But we can get top four and City can beat us and it can still all work well, out. Well, well, I, I, I'm still quite confident for the rest of this season. Liverpool win the double. Do you no, I reckon we'll get tonked by City. City will go on to win the league and then, as always, whenever City win anything in six months' time, the rest of the country will have forgotten about it. Six days' time? No, no literally, no, no one gives a shit when City anything. win things because they're not a proper see football club. City, mate, honestly. I think, do you remember when under Moyes... No, De Bruyne. Uh, do you remember when... Under, <laughs> If they're missing another 12 players, <laughs> maybe, you know what I mean? Throw in a few more, like... You got no one to replace him now? Are they going in with 10? Aguero and Silver and the other Silver and... Uh, 
Oh, that's the know, thing about Pogba as well. When De Bruyne has a shit day oh, or yeah. a shit game. He barely played this season. Yeah, and uh, Pogba's been much better than m- uh, most of their CMs uh, individually. But um, when when one of them has a day off, um, the rest can step up. No, but honestly, I, I think this is like, do you remember under Moyes where, was it after about 40 seconds he scored or something? Yeah, and then we won 4-2, that one. No, no, under Moyes we got beat against City. Oh, the Van Arbon was that one, wasn't it? When we, like, we literally, like, City scored in like the first minute or something, and we never right. recovered. Yeah, because, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was It was like, I think, I think it was going to be like that. When Rooney Wednesday. scored the free kick, won it at the end. Oh, is that Van Aal again? That's Van Aal again. Is it? it was, it oh, we've had some bad ones, haven't we, against them last few years? We've had some good ones with Van Aal. Van Aal was oh. the only one who's actually... His, br- his big brand. game record was amazing. Yeah, yeah, against mm. Liverpool and City. Um, Spurs. Arsenal as well. Wasn't too shabby, apart from one at the Emirates. And we got when Darmian's Darmian. career got yeah, ended. Yeah. <laughs> he was like one of the Sorry best... Sorry about pros- that, Matt, Matt one, of the, one of the best prospects from yeah, Italy you never, at that You never recovered from that the day. Sanchez? Sanchez oh, destroyed him, and then uh, yeah. Twanzebi was mint that day, wasn't he? twanzebi has been mint for Villa, you know. Is he? That's why I think we uh, take Smalling and Jones out the back, put them down. All right. Promote Twanzebi. Yeah. Sign two or three centre centre-halves How many centre <laughs> How many centre do you need? How many centre do you need? Hey. How many centre? Genuinely. No, you want one, to challenge for the one title? Solid one. I mean, one to replace. Solid. What if you look? No, I mean, I you need to have Twanzebi starting. Like, I don't not starting. Oh, right, okay. I thought you were saying him alongside him. Um, Liverpool. Van Dijk's had is it Gomez and either either Gomez or Matip is it next to it? Yeah. Mate, so Gomez or have, Matip. When you have one of those like a player like Van Dijk, City used to do it years ago when he had a company at his peak. You know, if someone swapped alongside him, it didn't matter mm. because he was that good. Mm. You know, we've done it in the past. I was gonna say yeah, had like a Rio or a Vidic. Obviously, those were the with Johnny and, Evans. But yeah, if one, one of them was out and if one, you know someone else came in. It, it was okay. Even, that, even if that someone else was Chris Moore or Phil Jones, it didn't matter. That's because they had a lead in next That's what I mean. That's Shows what I'm getting like, at. Yeah, Van Dyke. We ain't got that. We ain't got that. You know, our leader at the back at the minute is Chris Marlin. No. I'm one of you know biggest, what? I don't you know, know. Biggest. Critics. No, I'm not. I'm probably going to say one of his biggest, biggest defenders if you part of the pun, but, you know, he's not the man to lead the way, is he? <laughs> Chris Marlin appreciation Chris side. Marlin would be, Chris Marlin would be great as a squad player, man. You'd for love him to come on when you need him. You, you need, you need Chris Smalling. For all it. Chris, Chris Smalling, for, for me, is, is, is of the quality to be a third, fourth choice centre Mate, do you know what Chris totally. Smalling's problem is? And I figured it out one day. I sat there and I thought to myself, Chris Smalling didn't come for a professional academy. How, how I'm not sure. No, how can you tell? Happen. What part of his game can you not? tell? He came through non league football. Yeah, I know, but, yeah, I know, but that's what I mean. What, 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 what part, part, part of his game? What, what he's giving the football, it away? Naturally right. having the ball at his feet. Na- have you seen when he shapes up to pass? Hmm. It's Mate, like, I mean, I know. It's like my back granddad's back, passing. Like, people like something like that. Trust me, if he was schooled in a proper academy, he would be better. He would be. He'd probably be the best centre half in the Prem. He missed out on schooling. Roy Keane didn't come from the academy, didn't he? came from Cobb But that was a different, different, different I mean? era. Phil Jones didn't go to school either. He came from at Forest State. <laughs> Look, yeah, we had Chris Smalling, who played for Maidstone, bruv, then played for Fulham, had a decent few seasons, plays for Man United. He, I, am I the only one missing something here? Yeah, but Phil Jones came through the academy. He's, he's, he had a great progression. Phil Jones was the next Sam one. Sam I said Phil, Phil Jones, jo- best player he's ever seen. Phil, mate, Phil Jones at Blackburn. Like football or at <laughs> Connect Four. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Jones looked top at Blackburn. He did. And when we so signed him, it was like. Era. Phil Jones, when I, we got Phil team. Jones, I was like, yes. <laughs> right back, centre half, centre mid, on no, the wing, he play everywhere, the man. Yeah, That's what Ned Ferguson called him, Duncan Edwards, the second. I mean, that was. The yeah, irony is if Fergie was still here, Phil Jones probably would be as good as Duncan Edwards was. No, no, no. <laughs> let's not let's not get carried away. Phil Jones was shit when Fergie was here as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, I remember yeah. Phil Jones scored once and Fergie was started pissing himself. Do you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> nah, At Villa Park. Remember that? Phil Jones scored and Fergie and Carlos Quiroz just started pissing themselves. Nah, I do not remember <laughs> that at all. Men. Oh dear. <laughs> See, it's always been a banter era. We were just winning back I'll then. Tell you, I'll tell you when he pissed himself <laughs> as well. Smalling was given a new contract. Jesus wept. 
Jesus wept. Is that all we're going to title this podcast? Jesus it, it's, it's, it's a good be, post. It's got to be something. Good post Easter title that. Jesus wept. Jesus man, risen. No, on, then he wept. The positivity is if we get beat this week, Liverpool won't win the league. <laughs> 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 you had a great what, Easter you know what? The thing is, Ollie's fed up, right? He's obviously not happy with some of the mentality of some of the players. We know that he's he's not afraid to use some of the youngsters, so. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't say it. Liverpool are going to be signing petitions again, ain't they? Ollie's going to give yeah. nine. He's going to give nine first team <laughs> debuts, <laughs> and Liverpool oh, are going to be like, "What the fuck is this? Why I am I? Love it. Why am I seeing Greenwood?" <laughs> Chong, Ghana. Okay, we'll get all the old boys back. Why is Lee Grant in goal? What is going on here? Gary but Neville's Jeff playing Bacon right. Is, <laughs> is, is, is Bow at Old Trafford? What's going on here? We'll play all the players we're Ricky about Phelan to sell. Ricky starting. He's a midfield linchpin. Fred the Reds hey, up front. Do you know what I mean? It's going to mm. one of them. Listen, to be honest with you, I wouldn't mind even playing the kids in the season. Not all of them, obviously. I'll, but I'll be honest, we're going to beat City. We're beating City. You may want to beat City. I want us... No, I know what he's doing here. He's I, do- I know Manchester what he's United. doing here. He's saying it on camera, so it can't come back to bite him in the ass. Because if someone clips this up and sends it to him, he's going to be like, I'm buzzing all this wrong. We're beating... <laughs> Mate, do you know how fucked up this we season has been? We don't want United been. to lose, this just to make that clear. This season has been so we bad that United our win. best win of the season is going to gift Liverpool the title. Yeah. And if you don't believe that, I don't think you've been watching Manchester United for the last six years. No, just, just to make it clear, just, we do I all want United to win, and we're not going to... see that team that I saw... For the weekend, beating Sir. I'm gonna get smashed. I, that I, team I, isn't I turning. Looking, up. I thought City were gonna. I thought Liverpool. I've always backed City, right? I thought was thought City were gonna lead the season. And so recently, and I thought I thought the Spurs game a bit of one for City. I thought they dropped points there. Liverpool. No, no when City. City played Spurs, I thought that's the game. Actually, I could see them drawing that game, and that could tip it because I can't see Liverpool dropping any points. But when they won that game, I thought, nah, this is it now. Because I, I, honestly, mate, I, I want us to beat City. Of course, I do. Fucking Derby, sitting. You imagine all these, you know, around That's there. That's why I wanted Liverpool to draw against the Cardiff. Imagine popping out of the woodwork, <laughs> banging on about the Centurions retaining the title, all that rubbish. Absolutely no chance. Do you know what I mean? I can hide from Liverpool fans. I can't from City. <laughs> surrounded by them everywhere. So, and plus, I just want us to win the Derby. It goes without saying. Of course you do. I just don't think we're good enough. It's that simple. I just don't. And our record is shocking. We weren't good enough to beat Paris Saint-Germain, and we did. That's what I mean. It'll take a bit of luck like that. Mate, we're well, gonna yeah, yeah, yeah. we're gonna get a penalty in the last minute. Yeah, yeah. Say what? If VAR comes in, that run up by Paul Pogba is gonna be the longest ten minutes of my ten seconds of your life. <laughs> that could be it. Imagine we get a penalty last minute, nil nil. Let Rashford the take it. The atmosphere is gonna be weird, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, let Rashford take it. <laughs> let Rashford take it. Put it into the case, stand. So we're just starting hey, putting it yeah, to the yeah, keeper. Yeah, well, let's Yeah. <laughs> But even if we draw them, like as he does it, do you know that? Hey, 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 20 times. Hey, I'm a bear out here, fucking scouts, Yeah. But even if we draw, we've Stick given them the title. Stay out your position. You know. Even if what? We draw, we've given them the title. Yeah. Liverpool aren't dropping any nah, points. Are you playing Huddersfield and bloody the red light? Newcastle, Huddersfield, oh. Wolves. Oh, fuck, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Jesus. Seriously. I swear, haven't they already played them four times this season? Yeah, they do. They play them like seven and times. And even then, even then, <laughs> City have got us and Burnley <laughs> away. Can we check how many times Liverpool have played Wolves? Burnley put in a lot yesterday, to be fair. And they've just they're guaranteed same. safety, so hey. they'll probably switch off. We've guaranteed safety, so we might switch off as well. <laughs> Say what, though? No, We're not safe the yet. One, we need one, to keep losing. One, we don't want to be in Europa The one cover league. comfort would be, right, if you like, scouts on it, would be the fact that City... After all this shit yeah. about this amazing Centurions team, they couldn't even retain the fucking title. And at least then we kind of, like the bridge between us and Liverpool ain't that f- as far as it is with City. Nah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Also, it's not how these tables have turned, man. <laughs> we used to laugh at them. Do you remember when they got, I don't know if you were too young, so remember when we won the treble and they won, they got promotion by the players in League 2, yeah. And I remember laughing about it. I didn't feel bad. Like, oh, they got promoted. I was actually full. <laughs> gives a shit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Nicky Weaver and Paul Dickoff. All right, yeah. Good luck with that one. And I'm playing against Paul Dickoff. <laughs> I thought Paul Dickoff was going to be a right wanker. You know, you see his face yeah, and you think yeah, yeah. he was the best bloke there. Was he? Well, there Proper go, sound, isn't it? One, appreciation. Uh, one positive. He's started all this nonsense. It's one, his one, fault. One positive from the weekend. Leeds United. 
Cool. Is that a positive or a negative? I think Did you good. want them up? Actually, yeah, it's a good point. I think I might have wanted them up secretly, just to see us play. I wanted them up, but not the fan cams doing outside Ellen oh, Road. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been that one, wouldn't I? No, listen to me. <laughs> I, I vouched that. I vowed I would never not go up. back to Ellen Road again. Like, once I went there, we played in the Cowley Cup and Owen scored, and it's the worst away I've ever been to, honestly, by a country mile. Spat on racially abused. Did you? Me, uh, oh, me, it was horrible. <laughs> oh. I was clinging to the copper next to me, like for dear life. It was horrible. What year is that? That was 2013, was it? 2012, when Pogba was still around. It was, Pogba played that game, but this obviously before he went to Juve. And it was horrible, honestly, man. I've never seen anything like it. it and just... now we live in Brexit, Britain, so it'd probably be a little oh, bit shit. worse. Yeah, exactly, mate. Do you know what I mean? So good luck with that next next season. Yeah, yeah, send me to that one then, boys. <laughs> I'll just do some white face. <laughs> Just do it from a, just do it a little like I said to you before, do it a little bit away from the ground, like in Sheffield. <laughs> <laughs> Green screen, yeah. <laughs> and a road in the back. We're all on green screen. Green. It's a bit sunny there, isn't oh. it? <laughs> God. Mm. We're all stateside yeah. us putting on man cacks. Yeah, man. <laughs> He's not very good at his. This has been a podcast, by the way. Um any any final words before Are we doing the Wally of the Week? Oh yeah. I know you love that. Wally of the week. Manchester United, the whole lot of them. Really? So, mm. surely someone specifically has said some mad shit. It's usually racist. Sweet. Someone's usually been racist. Oh, right, okay. To, to latch on to. Um, you know what? Oh. We haven't done one since the Ashley Young. Like, I saw people defending the racist abuse of Ashley Young. That's like, yeah, who, who Well, he that? shouldn't have played crap then. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not laughing you know at what? that. So, I'm laughing I, at yeah. that argument. So put, that argument is I, fucking I saw brilliant. He, he said something about like, racist abuse is disgusting. I can't believe that in this day and age he did it. However, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that one. It's, it's <laughs> no. Did anybody think. see John Terry posting the. You did, didn't you? You, you posted, I got on that, but you didn't disable comments or something. Yeah. He, oh. John Terry is Wally of the Week for that alone. Uh, oh. Because of the fact that he did it, turned off comments, knowing. He knew. He knew. And he knew deep down, this is going to rattle those ethnics. Yeah. He, he did it, he did it, he did oh, it to man. get I've, us. I've, I, what about another Wally of the Week? Alan Shearer. Gonna, uh, Alan Shearer. Yes. After some of the stuff he's been coming. What did he post? Oh, how does song. the song go? Explain yeah. it. Right, so Shearer's tweet. Obviously, we have the song, don't we? Like, you are, no, the song that he referenced was "You, you Are My Soul Shire." The while and Shearer was fucking Dara. Please don't take my soul shire away. So he put the first few bits of that song in, and when he tweeted like, you know, when he's still singing his song, ha ha ha, as we were losing to Everton, whatever. <laughs> as as it say, hi United fans. Bet you wish you got me all them now, years ago. Alan, now, <laughs> Alan, you know, you was a manager for eight games in Newcastle. You won one of them. You got them relegated. Ollie's still probably gonna take carry on next season as United manager. He won the treble with United. He won titles, <laughs> Champions League, FA Cups. You won nothing with Newcastle. No didn't, didn't I, I swear I saw you retweet something before about Newcastle. Had a parade. Parade. You had a parade in '98 for not winning anything. You literally had a parade with no trophy on the top of your bus. I thought it was made for, up for back to back defeats in FA Cup finals. Exactly. So, really. You know, and, and, and I wish we got Alan Shearer. Shearer, Shearer you know. And what did he go to Blackburn Shearer. for anyway? It, it, it wasn't because they, they, they were the highest bidder, was it? No, nah, it's wages, he acts like, it? you know, wages, isn't it? It's like, that's the only wages. trophy he's got in his in yeah, his medal cabinet. Is so. I rejected Manchester United trophy. Mm. Well done, Alan Shearer. You Zlatan, are this. Zlatan were more in England than Alan Shearer did. <laughs> you are <laughs> that way. this week's Wally of the Week. Pretending to not know a song about a guy that took the challenge and won the lot. Could have been you, mate. Could have been you. Anyway, thank you for watching uh, the Full Time Devils podcast. Um, <sighs> <laughs> Don't end it on an exhale. This is the week. Sounds like I was going to do one of the apology videos, isn't it? You know, the YouTubers. <laughs> And they've been caught out being racist like, or something. Sorry, sorry to say sorry to all my fans. It was fans. a different time. <sighs> sorry, guys. I was young. Please still buy my merch. <laughs> sorry for I'm, being racist. I've, I've been educated. It's been, a, it's been a teachable moment for me. 
<laughs> and John Terry's still running banter on everyone. Uh, guys, make sure you keep it locked. Subscribe to us on Spotify, SoundCloud, hopefully iTunes. You can hopefully do that by now as well. Keep it locked to Full Time Devils on YouTube. Uh, thank you to everyone that's been tuning into our content recently. We've got more coming from the Manchester Derby where Manchester United are going to beat Manchester City and hand Liverpool the title. And then we've got Chelsea on Sunday to wrap up our top four spot, which is definitely happening as well, apparently. We'll beat City, beat Chelsea, draw with Huddersfield, <laughs> and beat Cardiff and win the league. Top four. It's happening. Any final words, guys? No, mate. I hate football. It's not happening. I, we're getting spanked by City. Whatever happens, I feel like, ugh, you know, I don't know. You I, don't, I don't know what I want until I see it happen. I wish. I don't know what I want <laughs> until Just I see it happen. Right. It's always darkest before the dawn. <laughs> we're hitting rock bottom now, but next season under our way, we'll be title challenges. Red sky at night, Ali's delight. First person to say it on the channel. My, my words. It would have been better without year. the little snigger at the end <laughs> of it, mate. I did, did say Marron Fellaini with the Ballon d'Or once on the channel, so don't say what I say. When was it that, that uh, Andy Tate went, we're on a title charge? <laughs> was that? Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> End the podcast. Was that? Stop was that, what, it. this season? I once said... I once said, seen as the same things that were stupid. I once said, put Tyler Johnny Blackett and Paddy McNair could form part of a title winning defence. What? By accident, I said that. I once said, put Johnny I Evans did. in midfield. It was yeah, so... a little bit excited about that QPR game, whatever it was with Paddy McNair. Made his <laughs> I said as well <laughs> when. Was, uh, was that after the Arsenal game when they both played? Uh, I was saying as well that um, Johnny Evans should be our captain, not yeah. Rooney. Johnny Evans would still start for us. Donny Evans is better than Chris Martin. I was looking at a picture of Michael Keane and Romelu Lukaku the weekend. I'd swap them two right now. Yeah, see the Lingard, you know what I've seen it because you're the game, Lingard and Michael Keane did a thing on Sky, sat on the table like chatting and showing pictures of each other when they were growing up and going on about it. And you just think like, you know, it's all fun and games, but Michael Keane would walk into our team right now. Let's face facts, he would. So would Will Keane. <laughs> anyway. So would Roy Keane. <laughs> <laughs> See you later.